Okay, so with everyone at home a little longer, everyone's eating the same snacks over and over, I'm imagining it, it's giving me nightmares. It's time we take that matter into our own. We're gonna make a bunch of healthy, easy snacks. So let's talk about merch really quick. My last upload a couple days ago, I released merch, and I just have to say thank you guys so much for the insane response. We sold out of the aprons in two days. We still have the hat and the shirt available, so if you haven't gotten those yet, please go click the link below. They're still there for now. Dad hat with the, knife, the cute knife. So with all that said, let's make this, shall we? Let's start this off with something easy like fancy boy popcorn. You can call me old fashioned, but we're gonna use a pot. Now fill a four quart pot with two tablespoons of high heat oil. Begin heating that over medium heat and add a third a cup or 70 grams of popcorn kernels. Now once they begin to sizzle a little bit, cover with a lid and begin to vigorously shake. You're gonna do this for a couple of minutes. Now first it's gonna sound like nothing, but then all of a sudden it's gonna be like bra bra bow bow bow. And as soon as the popping dies down, you know that the popcorn is done. Place the popcorn in a large bowl that allows for mixing room. Chop together one tablespoon each of rosemary and fresh thyme. They're, well, they're both fresh. Combine in a mortar and pestle, along with half a tablespoon of kosher salt. Grind that bad boy until it gets nice and fine like this. Now, to your popcorn, you're gonna add a quarter cup of melted butter, toss the coat evenly, season to taste with your herb salt, and finish with half a cup of fresh grated Parmigiano Reggiano or Grana Padano. Toss, 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 and there you go. You've got your popcorn. Now, if you wanna take it a step further, you can also fry up a little bit of salami that's been chopped up. I've got some truffle salami here until it's nice and crispy, and then you just top it with that, and then you've got your fancy fried salami herb popcorn. Ah, uh, yes, cock, uh, popcorn. Um, it's a movie staple. People like it. I like it. So I'm going. <coughs> <coughs> it's salty, it's buttery, it's got that punchy, herby flavor. Imagine, you're sitting back, you're watching a movie, eating this popcorn. That could be you. Now let's talk about the humble marinated olive. It's very simple. In a medium saucepan, you're gonna add two thirds of a cup or 160 milliliters of extra virgin olive oil, along with five garlic cloves lightly crushed, one tablespoon or four grams of coriander seeds, and five to six cardamom pods. Bring that up over medium heat, and then let that cook just until the garlic begins to brown. Turn the heat off, then add two bay leaves, half of a lemon slice, and two strips of orange zest. Stir that around and let that steep for 10 minutes. Now in a separate bowl, mix together one cup or 133 grams of Castel Vetrano olives, and one cup or 160 grams of Alfonso or any black olive you want. Now once your oil infusion has infused, pour your oil mixture and all the aromatics on top and let that sit for two hours at room temperature or in the fridge for as long as you want. Just make sure to serve it at room temperature when the olive oil is in a liquid state like this and enjoy with some crusty bread, some cheese jam, or however you like, or just straight up into the mouth. Marinated olives, I wanted to say marinara, no. Fragrant, garlicky, citrusy, bay leafy. The longer you let this marinate, obviously, the better. Citrus, the, the, the brininess. These plump boys. Marinated olives, they should be at every dinner party. I can't believe I'm saying this, but I made kale chips. You're basically gonna start with 10 to 15 stalks of kale. Now remove those nice and tender outer leaves and throw away the spine. Now for your spice mix, you can actually give this disgusting green some flavor. You're gonna mix together two teaspoons or four grams of kosher salt, half a teaspoon of MSG, yes, one teaspoon or two grams of porcini mushroom powder, two teaspoons or three grams of serrano powder, or cayenne is fine, two teaspoons or three grams of garlic powder. Whisk that together until it's nice and thoroughly combined. Toss your kale with one and a half tablespoons of extra virgin olive oil. Season generously with your spice mixture. Toss, toss, toss. Arrange in a single layer on a parchment lined baking sheet. You're probably gonna need two, I did and place it in an oven set to 250 degrees Fahrenheit for about 40 minutes or until completely dry and crisp. Let them cool completely on a wire rack, store them in an airtight container, and well, that's it. <sighs> I hate kale. I made kale chips as I thought, oh yeah, I'll make something healthy for people. So naturally I added MSG. Why can't more kale chip companies just start adding MSG? 10 out of 10 kale chip. We'll eat again. Come try the kale chips. Ooh, they look like seaweed. Ooh, these are good. Every time you come on here, all you say is, that's really good. Delicious. Okay, we're done here. Next up is gonna be cured cucumbers. So you can start with one large cucumber, cut it into half inch rounds, season it generously with sea salt and let that sit for about 10 to 15 minutes or until it expels some water. Drain it. If they taste too salty, you can always rinse them off, but I usually don't because I don't over salt them. Pretty much you're gonna dress them with chili oil and soy sauce, but I like to 
kick it up by adding a little bit of my gas streak from my chicken fried steak episode, a generous spoonful of Sichuan chili oil, dark soy sauce to taste, and by that I mean until it's salty to your taste, and half a tablespoon of sesame oil. Mix that together, place it in your bowl, cover it with the sauce, and well, you eat it. <sighs> Oh yeah, you know this might even be good with a little bit of extra hit of vinegar. Matter of fact, little Chinese black vinegar. That ah. <clears throat> so satisfying, and it takes like literally five minutes. The last thing is the simplest of them all. We're gonna talk about how to enjoy fruit on another level. So using pears or any stone fruit or even an apple, go ahead and cheek that bad boy, slice it thinly, arrange it on a plate, and then this is just about layering flavor. First hit it with some olive oil. Fresh cracked black pepper, flaky salt, always, some fresh lemon juice, some finely grated aged manchego cheese, and just a small pinch of sumac on top of that. Now this, this is one of my go-to snacks. That was a little loud. This is one of my go-to snacks. Oh damn. If you aren't dressing your fruits like this, this takes like five minutes to make fruit go from fruit to sexy or fruit. But do you wanna know who else has the fruits? B-roll. and that is it. I think there's two things that are important about snacks. A, it should be something that's easy to make. Most of the time when you want a snack, it just hits you. And second, it should be easy to eat. You don't always want a mountain of food. You just want a little, little, you know, little, little snacky snack. Thank you guys so much for the great response on the merch. I'm just so, so excited that, that you guys were stoked about it in that way. And don't worry, the aprons are gonna come back in stock. We're gonna release more of them. If you enjoyed this video or you learned something, leave a like, subscribe, this possibly be. So anyway, if you enjoyed this video or you learned something, leave a like, subscribe, and I will see you next time.